All right, so I want to show you guys the easiest way possible to convert a lightweight access point into an autonomous access point. And I've tried a couple different methods, and this is by far the easiest way to do it. Um, the first thing you need to do is actually go out and download the autonomous code for that access point. So go to cisco.com, under the download section, find the access point that you're using. You know, whether it's a 3700, 2600, maybe a little bit of an older uh, 1142, something like that. Uh, go out, download the autonomous code for it. And I'm going to have to do a couple things before um, we're, we're actually able to transfer it over. So once you download the code, you'll need to change the, the name of the file to this exactly. So the ap3g2-k9w7-tar.default. Um, if you're using a Windows machine, make sure that you're not hiding the file extension at the end here because it will default to, to .tar. You need to make sure it's the .default here. Um, same thing on a Mac, and, and honestly, um, good luck trying to do this on a Mac. I spent hours trying to get it done on a Mac, and I ended up just using a Windows machine for TFTP. Um, if you can get it to work on a Mac, great. Let me know how you did it because uh, you know I could not get it to work. I've gotten uh, the Mac to work with TFTP before for a bunch of other uh, routers and switches but for some reason the wireless APs just don't like the Mac TFTP server so um, again I'm just showing you guys here the local file name of, of what it is on my computer but I actually have this file on a TFTP server on a Windows box so after you download the file after you rename it um, on your TFTP server you're gonna need to change your IP address and the reason you need to change your IP address is because when you boot the AP, you're going to be pressing down the mode button in the back, and that's going to put the AP into recovery mode. And you can see here, I highlighted what it looks like when you do that. So the AP boots when you have the mode button down, and it's going to default to an IP address of 10.0.0.1. So you need to make your PC with a TFTP server on it something in that subnet. I usually do 10.0.0.5, it works completely fine. And you could also see here too, the reason why we rename the file is because the AP goes out and looks for, uh, does a broadcast and looks for that exact file name to load up. So, you know, once I do that, and I have all the files set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug my AP in, and make sure you're holding down that mode button should hear a little bit of a click if you know what's in there and I just plugged in my AP so it's gonna take a little bit to boot here hopefully only take a couple seconds and you can see it's starting to come up here in terminal alright now mode button is pressed you, can, you guys can see that there um, the important thing here is it needs to be pressed for longer than 20 seconds. If it's not, then this won't work. So I'm going to release now. It should have been 20 seconds. And you can actually see here that I had it pressed for 26 seconds. So nice that it tells you that. Um, if it's less than 20 seconds, again, this won't work. So right now it's going out. And we can actually see that it's... Uh, I can't show you guys my TFTP server. I just looked over my shoulder, but... It's, uh, it's pulling all these files down and everything. So we'll let this go for a little while. I'll probably stop the video and then, and then start it again once it comes back up. Alright, so hopefully your guys' APs finished downloading, uh, rebooted and everything. Um, you should eventually get to just a regular AP prompt here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go into enable mode on this. Uh, if I ask you for a password, the default password is Cisco with a capital C. So C-I-S-C-O. Enter. And you can see we're in enable mode here. I'm going to do a config T. So I'm going to put a uh, I'm going to put an IP address on the BVI interface here. So that way we can we can actually get to this thing again um, without having to go through through command line and uh, in terminal here so uh, I'll show you guys how to do that and then you can even configure it through the GUI on the web if you wanted to uh, so I'm just gonna go in again config here and do interface BVI1 and that's your bridge virtual interface and then I need to do an IP address on this 
So if you want to keep it on that 10 0, 0, um, 0 subnet, and then you can just make it some IP address on there. I'll do 10 0, 0, 100. Your subnet mask. And that's it. If you want, you can save this. And then now we should be able to go to 10 0, 0, 100. And you're in. And if this page pops up and it asks you for a username and password, um, username is again Cisco with a capital C and password is Cisco with a capital C as well. So now you should be in it and you can go in and you can figure this through the GUI if you wanted to. And that's it. Thanks guys.